Hi everybody, Chris Petri here. Welcome, welcome everybody. Come on by, come on in. We're going to actually uh, just show our painting, finished painting first, and our photograph. So we have our photograph up, I looked up online. Uh, Venice, Italy. So we did a beautiful Venice, Italy scene here. Very simple. Just, uh, you know, windows, doors, a little bit of, uh, you know, a couple angles here and there, but nothing too crazy. And uh, you can do this. This is really something uh, that's uh, very fun to do, simple. We zoomed in and, you know, we just did a, a, we cropped our photo. I found a photo that looked really good. I cropped it down to this uh, um, size and look. And then I just took this and we drew and painted this scene right here on this video. So you can use this uh, as your subject matter to work from. And I'll leave this up for just a second and then we'll get right started with the drawing and the painting. All right, Chris Petri here. You just saw the finished painting, so that is um, something you can work from. You can work from your finish, my finished painting. You can work from that. You can draw and paint from that. Or now we're going to start the drawing. I already started the drawing, so it kind of saves a little bit of time. You don't have to maybe watch as much uh, drawing as um, it might get a little boring or you're not uh, really that interested in seeing every little drawing detail that I go through. So what I did is I just, we saw the finished painting and now this is the photograph I work from. This is on my iPhone. I basically just looked up uh, Venice, Italy images, pictures of, of Venice, Italy. I found a really nice um, picture of like a more of a wider angle photograph and then all I did is I just trimmed it down so I just took the picture saved it and then I went into my phone and I just trimmed it down cropped it down and saved it that way so that now this is what we have we have the crop down picture like that so basically that's what I'm working from I'm going to set this up across from me and then once I you know set this up across from me I'm just going to carefully do my hash marks so we always do our three point um three-point process we do our hash marks around the outside of our taped paper so we always tape our paper down to our working surface with uh, watercolor tape artist tape uh, drafting tape whatever you have masking tape painters tape you use that and then once you have that set up where you have your paper taped down then all, well, it's just a matter of getting our hash marks down so let's take this you can actually hit pause and draw from this if you want. Or if you want, you can just kind of go along with the flow of the video here and then come back again to the beginning of the video and you can uh, watch it again a second time and then kind of take your time more. Sometimes it's good just to watch something, you know, full, fully all the way through. Like on my videos, I always suggest people you watch full, you know, the full video all the way through. Take a few notes if you have to here and there if you need to for some things or, you know, so forth. Then uh, once you're done with that, you come back and then you just, as you go through the video, you just stop and pause as you need to, to work on the video. So the first video, you might pause it in the beginning where I show my finished painting and you look at that, study a little bit for maybe five minutes or so, look at the finished painting, kind of notice things. Then once you're done with that, you hit the go button, 
you go forward, you go here, you maybe stop on this, pause on this, you look at this photograph that I'm working from, and you kind of say, all right, I see the finished painting, now I see the photograph that Chris is working from. And then maybe uh, the next thing you'll stop on is once I'm done with my drawing, you'll my pencil drawing, then you might stop on that and then look at that for a few minutes. Take a look at it. Maybe you might start drawing at that point where you're, you see my finished drawing, my finished uh, pencil drawing. You might draw from my pencil drawing. When you hit pause on the video, you draw the same drawing I've drawn. And then once you go from there, you start the painting and then you just work through step by step on the painting here. Uh, of the painting portion. So I'm going to put my uh, painting, or actually my photograph, I'm putting my photograph across from me, and I'm going to work from that. And then as you can see, I already started my drawing. Basically, let me zoom back. And then we always do our three-point process. This is how I started the video, uh, where I started the uh, process hash marks on the left side where the building is. The building's about on the left side halfway. The top of the building is about halfway on the paper. Half, half, about middle middle way, the middle point. Then the painting, the uh, building goes up and it steps up. And it goes to about three quarters of the way up the paper. So the paper here is about three quarters of the way up. You're gonna have the top of your building up here. And we made another hash mark there. And if you don't land exactly on your hash marks, that's fine. Does that make sense? Don't worry about it. Hash marks are just a general thing you're going to be looking to aim for when you're doing your drawing. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay. Now, the bottom of the painting, we had um, about an eighth of a way up from the bottom up. We had the bottom of the left-hand side of our painting here. And it works about the same way. About an eighth of the way up is the bottom of the buildings, the two buildings here. Okay, now once I did that, I got my hash marks and then I got one more hash mark here, my vertical hash mark, just showing me where the two-story building is and where the three and four-story building starts in this corner here. And then it goes up and gets larger like that. So you can kind of see it's real simple. It's bottom of building, top of building on the left, top of building on the right, and then the division of the two-story building on the left, and then over here is the right side, which is the three- and four-story side of the building. So it's really very simple. You can kind of see my hash marks are very simple. One here, one here, one here, and then this one is the same, and this one up here. Okay, then I just started drawing. First thing I did was I drew, I just drew a line across and kind of got my line going up for the top of the building. Then I did the uh, chimney and penthouse over here, which was like an, an addition on top of the building like that. So you can get your main line of the top of the building first. Then you add on your chimneys, or if you have another small portion portion of building over here, like we have a penthouse up here, that's fine. And then the bottom of the building, we went across here, tiny bit of an angle here, and then across all the way. And that's that's basically the top and bottom of building. Does that make sense? Keeping it simple. This is another line here. And we'll put some angles on here, just to make it like three-dimensional. So you can see I'm adding on the little bit of a, over here, this side wall, this return wall over here, it goes this way. This is a side wall over here too, like a return wall. And then all I did was I just looked at my photograph and got my windows, left window over here, Another window on the left over here, so one on the bottom, one on the second story, the second floor. Then I went over here, did the same thing. Window or a door, doesn't matter. 
it's a little bit uh, in dark. There's a lot of darks over here, so you're not going to have to worry too much about that. And then another window up here. Once you have these in, then you can go from here and say, okay, where is this window over here on this return wall, which is sort of on an angle going this way. And it's about here. And another window here, just a dark spot there. Then here on the right building, on the right hand side, large door. Two windows. Another door. This is like a maybe a French door that walks out onto a balcony. And then a double door, maybe a sliding door or a French door over here with a um, balcony. Wrought iron balcony with some plantings and things. So we'll add those later when we paint. Two more windows down here. Then we also did some um, the uh, pilings here that go into the um, into the into the uh, the under under portion of the canal here. So these canals are all water. So this is all water here on the bottom, and these pilings go down into the earth below the water. And then they can tie off the boats to that. And then also, too, if there's boats, they don't want the boats bumping into the walls. So these provide a protect protective barrier around the building as well. And we have a large arch door here. And there is another window here. And then we have up above this window, we have another window here. Pretty much same level, like that. And then up here, we have another um, And some wrought iron railing there. And this, this should be... And if you have a problem, you take some kneaded eraser. If you're drawing and you need a little bit of corrections, no big deal. You take the kneaded eraser, erase a few lines. I just want this window to be uh, in this plumb. Plumb or vertical on the same line as these windows and doors here. Like that. And we're going to leave these walls over here, just plain walls. We could even uh, take our tape and make this painting a little more slim on the right side. Let's do that. Let's take our tape. If you find there's an area where you might have a lot of uh, empty paper, you can you can move your tape over. That looks better. See that, how we do that? So now our, that's the edge now of our painting. So it looks a little better like that. So if you find you have too much paper left over, you just move your tape over and you have it. There you have it. Like that. And we can do a little more details here. Probably a good time to take a break, but I'm going to push on here and just try to keep going. So we have um, some railings up here. Good. There's some details up on the top of the roof here. Rectangular window there. And 
and then we said we're going to maybe make a boat over here. Let's make a boat over here. Why not? And this is a point where you might take a break. You might say, all right, I want to add a boat into my um, drawing, but in my photograph there is no boat. Well, that's not a problem. If you don't have a boat in your photograph, you might look it up online and say, uh, let me look up uh, Venice boats. And you'll, and then when you do a search on Venice boats, you'll find some boats. And then you can draw from that boat and kind of add it into your painting, and it looks fine. If you draw in a boat that's similar to ones that you find in Venice, like that, you're okay. So that's one boat over there. Looks good. Maybe another one over here. Let's see. Like that. Make another one over here. And there's a piling over here, maybe. And maybe it's tied off to that piling there. A little bit of shadow. Shadow under there. Shadow, and a little bit of shadows under here. Now's the point where I'm going to add a little bit of shadowing. So I'm going to say, all right, here are those pilings. Let's add a little bit of piling shadows, a little uh, wavy lines, just a little bit, just to remind us to do that when we paint. And what else do we have? I think this is fine. This is a lot of detail for this type of a painting. Most of your work you're going to do with your brush and paint, so you don't have to worry too much. And then you have your sky. We're going to do a simple sky. So no big deal with the sky. We'll let that take care of itself. What we'll do though is we're going to make sure when we come back and paint, we're going to look at the darks and the lights of this pic, this, the pic, the actual photograph that we're working from. We're going to look at the darks and lights and try to capture that exact. If we can capture exactly what we see in that photograph, we're going to get like a, a beautiful rendition of this scene. Does that make sense? All right. Well. Hey, I always remind you guys, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Um, you can also hit the notification bell to the right of the subscribe button. You're going to want to be um, alerted each week as we're creating new paintings just like this. You're going to want to be um, here working, drawing, painting, catching up on the details of how we're doing all these beautiful watercolor paintings. And always don't forget that we do other subject matter as well. So if you don't like really doing something like this with buildings and windows and doors and, you know, uh, architecture, things like that, no problem. We're doing, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be doing maybe flowers or ocean paintings or maybe a beautiful landscape where we got trees and fields and barns and things like that. So don't worry. We're always doing different subject matter here. So if you subscribe, you're going to always, you get the alert. You'll see what we're working on. If you don't like it, then you just come back the next week and you try another painting that you might like. But here, this one's kind of fun. I think everybody likes this. It's kind of a vacation kind of feel. You're going to Venice. You know, you're along the canals. You may be in a hotel. You're enjoying a beautiful stay in Italy, in Venice. You're looking at these buildings, all the gorgeous architecture, the boats, the canal. It's just great fun, great, excellent subject matter. So we're going to continue on. Come back in just a minute or two and we'll start our painting. Take a break. If you're working along with us, please, please take breaks, before, you know, as you're painting, drawing and painting. I always would, you know, guaranteed minimum, you're going to want to take a break between your drawing and your painting. So if you draw, do your drawing and then take your break for maybe 10, 15 minutes and then come back and do your painting. You can always do this two and three days, at a, you know, take two or three days to do this type of a work. Or if you want to do it all in one day, take those breaks, though. Make sure you get some rest in between drawing and the painting. And you might want to take a couple breaks while you do your drawing, and then maybe two or three breaks while you do your painting. I would say if you can, stick with that method all the time when you paint, when you're doing paintings, and you'll be set. You'll have a great... Um, You'll have better success, I think, because when we don't take breaks, we get fatigued, we get tired, we start to make mistakes, we start to um, think too much, and we're not just kind of sticking with our fundamental things. We know 
what to do. We just, we don't start doing it because we're fatigued and tired. So everyone knows when you get tired, we get a little sloppy. So let's kind of stick to that rule. Take lots of breaks. All right. We'll see in just a second. We'll start painting in just a few minutes. All right. We're going to start our painting now. Let's get into it. Before we start painting, let's take one more look at our photograph here. There we go. So you can see we're going to do a la prima, a la prima painting. A la prima is just all at one time. We're just going to start painting and go right through the whole painting. Uh, we're not going to glaze. Glazing would be maybe doing like a wash all the way across, a real light wash and then coming over the top with darks. That's a good approach for this painting. You can try it that way if you want. If that's what you're more comfortable with, you definitely you can do that. But here on this video, you're gonna see me do the Ala Prima, which is basically we're gonna start with the darks first. So anywhere where you see the really, really darks, the windows, the doors, the shutters, the glass of the windows and doors, the cornice on the top of the buildings, the water and the, um, uh, the uh, retaining walls and the uh, there's some uh, looks like docks along here so there's some docks some really dark paint so I'm gonna start with the darks and then from there do the lights last and that's fine you can do it that way or you can do the glazing approach do all the lights first get your wash down with your blue sky your salmony red color for your building over here this is white this building here and you can get some blue and green in the water over here. And then you can maybe come in and do your darks on top of that. That's fine too. So you do it the way you want. You're the artist. You can you can try this painting twice. Maybe once a la prima like I'm doing it. You can follow the way I do it here. Then you can try it a second time. Maybe do it uh, the glazing approach where you're doing the lights first. A nice wash over the whole painting with the lights. Let it dry 100% and then come back and do your uh, darks and middle tones over the top of that. That might work too. That, that would look good too as well. So you do it the way you like. Paint it the way you like too. Does that make sense? You're the artist. You're going to try different things, try different techniques, methods to um, make it uh, work for you. I'll take this now. I'll put this across from me on my uh, art table. I'm going to zoom back out like so. And I'm going to start in and we'll do our darks first. So I'm just going to think out loud now. I'm going to go with, um, let me see, darks here. What darks am I going to use? Well, I know I like that the blacks are going to look good in this. So I'm going to go with ivory black and Payne's gray. Let's get some really good black darks over here. Um... Probably good to have two different water pails. I usually use only one water bucket, but maybe when we're doing darks like this, maybe you can do this one first. So you have one water bucket for your first rinse, and then you go to your main water bucket for your clean water. Just an idea. I don't really mention this too much. So some of you that you've been following me a long time, you might use two buckets sometimes or all the time. I know a lot of great artists do, do use two buckets of water all the time. So they have one that they use to get the main larger portion of their paint off the brush first. Then they go into the cleaner water second. So that's up to you how you want to do that. But that might work good for this one. And then I'm going to have uh, a tissue. So I take a tissue in my hand, I hold the tissue in my hand, and I blot off some water once in a while on my tissue just to keep my brush from getting overloaded with water sometimes. Especially when you're doing your darks, you don't want too much water in your brush. So let's do that. Let's do some darks over here. And wow, this is some darks over here. And you can also add some burnt umber, sap green, raw umber, Add some variety to your darks. That doesn't hurt. Like that. And from the photo, it's all dark. But you can variate. You can make some variations in that. Then we'll have some 
sap green, raw umber. That's going to be for some some uh, bushes over here. Like that. And then more darks over here. Looks great, look at that. And then right over here, darks. And again, we're working our darks here. Then we're going to go with our um, salmony uh, red. Let's mix up some reds here. We're going to go with all kinds of interesting reds. Um, that is, so I use um, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, burnt sienna, and then I mixed in a little bit of um, um, that is yellow ochre. Mix around till you kind of get that color that looks good. Uh, what else looks good in there? Maybe some yellow, cadmium yellow. Some burnt umber too, so we mix it up a little bit. And this is the um, retaining wall here by the dock. So this looks like it's a dock here, or basically a retaining wall in front of the um, two-story building over here. And then you have the uh, water. So let's do the boat. And you just have fun. Work the darks, do all the darks first. I did a little bit of the red first too. And we'll come back and do darks over here. A little bit of cerulean blue, cool, warm and cool. And this is basically light. And then this is dark green and some viridian green there. I went over a white. Let me do that. There we go. French ultramarine blue. Here we're just trying to get the darks really good. A 
little bit of sky color up here just to give us some sky color. Orange. There's some orange along here. Okay, let's uh, let's stop here and we'll come back and do some more painting. We're just going to take a quick break. I'm going to change out my uh, water, my battery on my cam, and we'll be good to go. So we'll be back in just a second. All right, we're back and we're going to continue on painting here. So we're continuing our painting. We're doing our darks first and some lights here. I did some... Uh, Cerulean blue and French ultramarine blue for the sky with some uh, cadmium orange just to get some sky wash in there. Um, this looks like it's a very dark dark. So I'm going to add in some brown and Here we go. And I did the windows over here on this this wall here. Let's continue, maybe some green in there. So it's ivory black, Payne's gray, and then I mix in a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of sap green, burnt sienna, a little bit of, just plenty of dark over here. Okay, this is the awning. So let me just go across like this, like that touch of water again a lot a lot of dark darks here there's dark here stones there's a dock here maybe some rocks and stones Then we have some more. This building over here is a couple splashes just to keep us uh, loose here. Darks for the windows. So I'm thinking out loud here. I'm just really focusing on my darks right now. When I'm painting a la prima, or as we call it the direct approach, I'm just going with the trying to get the dark darkest darks in. But if I do put in a couple of lights, just to kind of you know, keep myself interested and interest, you know, kind of, you know, kind of feel like I like to see other things going on, you know, on my painting. I'm kind of getting bored with all the darks. All of a sudden, you know, let me, let me put in some, some, you know, lights there, some color just to get it. And then we have the, um, The arched here, the arched doorway. And 
Then we have the boat over here. Okay. Can't hurt to make some greens and blues here. And I'm just going to go in and do some water here. There we go. French ultramarine blue. Greens and blues. Maybe a little bit of yellow ochre in there. Some reds in there too. We got the buildings above. And as you can see, <clears throat> we're getting we're getting there. Plenty of dorks. And I'm going with what I see in the paint in the photograph. And you can see I'm having fun. I'm just getting in the basics of it. I'm not um, stressing over it. Anyone that's painted with me for a while here on YouTube, you'll you'll notice you probably paint faster now. I really kind of paint pretty fast. I really don't get, get too, you know, bogged down with, like, uh, details. And I'm just trying to get the basic essence of what I'm seeing here. I have the drawing already done, too, so that helps me. I just go right over the, right over the lines that I drew before. Not perfectly, just approximately where the lines are. I'm, I'm going over those. And we're having fun. We're doing a little bit of different colors here and there. One window might have a little bit of different color in there, like that. That one's a little more uh, Viridian green. Then we have another window over here. It looks kind of like it has a little bit of uh, Prussian blue, so we'll do that. This one here. You know, always looks good too if you have variation in colors. I. 
There's some plantings and stuff. I'll splash a little bit. We'll go over these areas where the wrought iron fence is. And we're just going to keep going. Darks. There we go. See that? Quick. Have fun with it. Don't let it stress you out. Shutters. And we've been doing a lot of cool colors. There's some warm there too. Now I'm going to start putting in some of the um, salmon color, reddish color for the bricks and the salmon color uh, finish on the building. If it blends into the other areas, fine, or if it blends into the other colors, fine. Lots of variations, splashing, try to splash here and there. This is more white stucco over here, so we'll leave that the way it is. So we do up and down strokes, vertical strokes, horizontal strokes. That will give you your variation. Just like that, cross, down. Blend some areas in. Lizard and Crimson. So you're going to have fun with this. Mix your salmon-y color any way you want. If mine doesn't look exactly salmon color, that's okay. You can try to maybe have some tube paint that it's, looks more like salmon color paint. I didn't take my time to figure out salmon color, but I, I know people mix it. And I've mixed it before too on my paintings. I've used salmon color on other paintings that I've done 
for right right now though I kind of lost track of how to do it so I just went with what I have here but it's it's kind of the same idea something in there you know reds maybe a little bit of yellow maybe a little bit of white there might be some gouache I think I've seen people make salmon color with sam a salmon color with like gouache it's or orange I forgot to add orange maybe that's probably what it is orange a little bit There we go, a little bit of orange, mix in some orange there. But you can see here, this looks really good, some reds. It looks close to the picture, what the picture looks like. Purples, I mix some purple in mine there for shadows. Um, there's some whites, some whites and grays. And some darks on this side over here, the shadow side. Okay, we're going to take a break in a second. We've been working probably 20 minutes or so, so it's good to actually take those breaks. We're having a fun time here, and we're going to take a break.
just so we have some uh, time to take a break, relax, rest, come back, look at the painting before we come in and start painting again, just to kind of see what we're going to need to do to finish up. But I think we're looking pretty good here. I think we're almost actually, um, we'll probably have another 10 minutes or, or so to finish up this painting, but I think we're pretty good actually. We have a lot of the detailed information in there. We're just going to need a few more details, but I'll tell you the best thing to do now is to let it dry 100% because this way we can go back in and do any details and not have any problem with the paint flowing everywhere. You know what I mean? Like when you're doing, when you're doing um, details over wet paper, it can really be a hassle and really, you know, you get those blossoms, those balloons, the bleeds where the paint just goes flying across your paper and you have to start tapping it up. Don't worry about that. Let this dry 100% at this point, and then come back and do your final deal. You know details like doing the uh, railings, the railings on the windows and the doors, the wrought iron railings. Maybe we'll do some some couple small shadows where the uh, pilings are, those uh, pilings that are sticking up from the water, and maybe we'll, we'll, and then we'll finish the sky wash uh, too. We'll get some sky wash in there, which will look good. Okay, so let's come back though. We'll do um, maybe a couple more. Uh, couple more uh, sessions I would say one come back we'll do the sky wash and some details and then we'll maybe do some final details at the at the last uh, last portion of our uh, painting okay so we'll be right back all right we're we're gonna finish up here eventually <laughs> it's taken some time it's taken some time to finish up here but we will get there so let's continue working here. A little bit of light wash now. We did all the darks, so most of the darks we did. Now we'll just do some, I have some of that purple in mix over here. A little bit of just grayish purple just to uh, And I'll do a little bit of shadowing under here, so a couple spots. Some shadow in here. It's kind of darker over here. And as you can see, I I let things happen on this painting. I let things go free. Uh, I'm not like, trying to get every detail perfect. I'm just trying to really get the the um, working through the painting uh, in an a la prima fashion, in a direct approach fashion. It's really just get those darks in first, and then start working in those middle tonal values, like the salmony pink color for the building. You know, we did that. And then you can add a little bit of wash here and there. Some of that salmony pink color, you can just move it around. Get some uh, texture. Looks pretty good. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll get it, I'll get some uh, raw umber, raw umber, raw umber, and we're gonna get some of these a little bit of uh, some of that black black color mixed in with the raw umber maybe. Thank you. 
And if you don't think that, that uh, those shadows and reflections look too good, you can always maybe put a few in here and there, but maybe not make them all real uh, There we go. A little indication of the uh, shadows of these. That looks pretty good. Then, a little bit of shadow for these darker windows, or these uh, doors here. This looks like we could make some dark uh, reflections for that. Same with this one here. This door here we could reflect. Maybe that would look good. A little bit of splash of water on there. And I just blot up a little bit. If you think the shadows are too much, blot up a little bit. There we go. Looks maybe a little better that way. Um, and let's see here, a couple. And again, at this point, we're looking good. Not too many more details. Okay, needlepoint brush. We have a needlepoint brush here. You can see it's Got that really super fine point. Perfect for details. So we'll mix up some dark, burnt umber, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, and we'll use some black here. We'll use some uh, ivory black. Okay, and then we're just gonna do some details here. We'll take our time, have fun. Okay, that's a little bit of a shadow under there. That's a window. There, there's nothing under there I don't see, really. This here is a planter. Okay, let's do the... Okay, here I'm doing the wrought iron. A little more water to this mix over here. Burnt, uh, burnt umber. Ivory black. Burnt Sienna. There we go. Now we'll do some... Again, quick. Pretend uh, people are going to think we've spent effort and hours doing these details when actually we just have fun and put them in like this quick. Like that. There we go. And this one here, same thing. We have some wrought iron. Have some fun with it. Just get some shapes in there. Okay, under here we have a planter. So we're gonna do a shadow under the planter, shadow under the planter. Shadow under here, maybe. Raw umber, so we'll... Raw umber and then some of the uh, dark Mix there. And that gives it that wood look of a wood planter, maybe. There, like that. A couple little 
maybe up here it's a wood planter, maybe it's not a wood planter, maybe it's just some shadows, who knows. Good enough. Then we will go up top. And we have these up here. You could take your time maybe up here more. These are more... I'll just go right over my drawing, my sketch. Like that. And then I'll just do more of a free look there, like that. Like that. And there's a little shadow under here I can see. that. What I'm doing is trying to look at the, I keep looking back and forth. That's the main thing I try to do here is I try to look back and forth at the photograph as much as I can constantly back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. In this way, it kind of, I'm following exactly what's there, which is good. And uh, let's see what else we have here. Do we have anything else? Maybe a few darks over here, it looks like. We have some darks over here. Then we have some and we can make some darks on the upper upper portions of the uh, glass in the windows like that. I do it very carefully with my needlepoint brush. kind of good. And that looks good. I don't want to do too more. You can get carried away with details. That's the main point is don't don't fall into that that pitfall which everyone does. I do it myself and I'm doing it now where you're going with tons of, you know, too much details like just over and over. It's at a certain point, we definitely just want to let the painting be as it is, get the main portion of the uh, painting done, and that's it. We leave it go. The only thing I have to do left is the sky wash. Let's do the sky wash. Guaranteed that um, we can get a good sky wash in. We're going to use some of that muddy color. Let's do that. We could add some water, so I'm just going to free flow here. Some dark up here. Lots of dark up there. Let's do dark in that corner. Whoa, that's really dark and lots of um, Prussian blue. And then let's just work it out. orange there so
can. We're having fun. That's the main thing. Have fun. Have a free, fun time with your skies. Put on lots of water, lots of wash. Maybe, maybe keep a few areas darker, some areas lighter. So I made this upper a little bit of uh, cobalt blue, like that. You could blot up some paint with some tissue. Okay, and there we have it. Lots of fun. We stuck with our main methods of hash marks first, light sketch to get the main idea going, third, contour drawing, draw in all your details. And then after that, you're going in with your a la prima method, which is all the darks first. And then you do your middle and light tones last relatively, you know, close to that type of uh, process. You know, it doesn't have to be exact. You kind of go with the flow. You're the artist. You know what you're doing. And there we have it. We'll peel off the tape. And what I'll do is we'll put this painting in the first part portion of the video so you can kind of see the finished painting right in the beginning of the video. And I thank you for watching so much. And again, if you feel free to subscribe, um, to my channel, the you know, subscribe button is right down below, below the video here. This way you're always getting an alert when new videos come out and we do all kinds of videos, everything watercolor. Some days we're doing this type of painting with some, uh, you know, architecture, buildings. Sometimes we're doing flowers. Sometimes we do beaches and ocean. Sometimes we do figures. We're always doing different things constantly, changing our our subject matter, but we're always doing everything watercolor and always sticking with our methods. The methods that we teach here are really basic. If you follow them every week, you'll eventually be painting in the same uh, fashion and you'll have a fun time and a much easier time of completing your watercolors uh, successfully. Okay, so everyone, thanks again for watching. Thanks so much. It's great uh, painting with you and drawing with you every week and um, we'll see you on the next uh, video, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.